this is still an open question. Uh, of course, something very important is during development, like the newborn and um, the children, they display uh, a lot of REM sleep. Newborn mostly it's REM sleep. If there is no not it's still non REM at the beginning, so it means that it's it's very important for development. Honestly, we don't know really what's going on during development, and there are a, a few studies, but. Certainly, it's important to set up uh, all the, the sensory motor system uh, because you have a lot of movement in babies uh, generated during REM sleep. Uh, so we believe, and there is, I mean, there are a few studies showing that you need to set up everything, right? Your cortex to, to set up all, all the movement. Yeah. And how do you do that? Because you have no movement as a newborn. Uh, you don't you don't run right <laughs> yet, but still you need to set up the running and the walking system and everything right. And we believe that so at this time REM sleep is important. So maybe in adults it's a bit the same. Uh, it's important to set up a complex behavior. The fact that uh, the motor system uh, is important. This is something nobody uh, did test really really directly. So what we know in in, uh, in adult, it's important for for memory consolidation, for learning. Uh, the state there are some evidence that it, the, the the REM sleep state is important for that, but there is no knowledge at the moment to uh, I mean how far it goes in terms of uh, of its implication, like you said in cognition or in learning and memory. Does it? Uh, is it specifically involved in certain type of learning more than others, for example? So this is not clear at all. This is something we need. Uh, we need to work on. I would like to uh, I mean, to say that I believe that uh, it's not responsible for our, all type of learning and memory. Some 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 learning and memory you don't need at all. Uh, paradoxical sleep, I would say. Uh, I, I have the feeling, and there are some evidence of that. Uh, but still, okay, so what, what, and what it is important for, it's also there is some, some, some question about mood, uh, mood regulation, and this is also something interesting. So here, it's a bit different than learning and memory, uh, because it's, it contains a lot of emotional uh, content, right? The, the, the state, the dreams, so on the, which it's a very uh, it's a state during which the limbic system is very activated, and this is what we show. I will show in my talk also. We have a very specific limbic cortical activation. So there is something to do with with the emotion, uh, coping with emotion, and we know in depressive patients they have problems with REM sleep also. So uh, there is a link between mood regulation and also the state of REM sleep. And this is something we are working on also, to find out, okay, what it can do, uh, whether it can treat depression in a way, you know, it can regulate, regulate mood. And so these are hypotheses, but globally, we still need to work on, you know, uh, on to define more clearly what type of condition is regulated by the state and what we are doing is we we go much more far than that because we examine in the brain the population of neurons involved so it's not now anymore that's uh, to say okay it's implicated in learning and memory it, it's to say okay what's happening in the brain during REM sleep how the state is regulating by uh, cognition which neurons are important what they are exactly doing these these were uh, uh, the question we are trying to answer to, but as you know, I mean cognition. There, is, there are a lot of papers and published every day on co cognition, so it's not something completely understood yet. So how do you want to understand the function of the state if you don't uh, yet understand how the brain? <laughs> is working right so it's something in progress so this is this will take a long time i'm sure <laughs>